Hey, hey, Geometry BC, welcome back. Uh, finally done with that circles unit. We're ready to move on to the second to last unit, which is unit 11, area of polygons and circles. We are going to see right away some old concepts and topics being brought up again. So make sure you take your time and uh, pace yourself during this uh, video here today. If you do not have the packet yet, you can access the packet by going to your schedule and it's right below where it says Mr. Carlino, there's access to the packet there, and there's access to the packet uh, under Monday's video to watch. Or you could just go on Aspen and download it yourself. Three different ways to get this packet. All right, let's get hopping. Make sure you have a calculator with you. Pause the video if you don't have your calculator up on your Chromebook or near you. You're definitely going to need it because we crunch a lot of numbers for area here. All right, formulas we're going to need here. Some of them may look familiar to you. You may remember them from your middle school, elementary school days. Some of them may be new to you. Great. All right, let's run through these right now. First, area of a parallelogram, base times height. Okay, BH, base times height. Circle, pi r squared. Okay, pi times your radius squared. Triangle, that's one many people know. One half the base times the height. One half base times height. Rectangle, just base times height, length times width. All right. Trapezoid, a little bit more uh, complex. One half its height times the sum of its bases. So a trapezoid has two bases, base one, base two. Those are the parallel sides, okay? And finally, rhombus and a kite. Oh, boy, let's just go black. One half D1, D2. And the D value stands for the diagonal length. Okay, we're going to stretch these formulas over the course of the next three top three days. Today, our focus is going to be strictly on parallelograms and triangles. Okay, so right off the bat here, example one, can you find me both the perimeter and the area? Okay, perimeter and the area. Okay, well, let's start with uh, the perimeter. Okay, as you guys know, perimeter is all sides added up. And the only side I am given on this parallelogram is 23. And reviewing our properties of a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So if that side's 23, the opposite side also has to be 23. All right. Now, what about the other two sides here? Let's put an X and an X here. How can I find those sides? We'll take a look. What I set up here is a right triangle where I gave you the two legs and the side we're missing is the hypotenuse. So off to the side, go ahead. Let's do seven squared plus 24 squared equals C squared. All right, you crunch those numbers. C ends up being 25. So the other two opposite sides end up being 25 and 25. Okay, add them all up. The perimeter of this parallelogram should be 96. Make sure you have units, and I'll tell you why that's important in a second, feet. All right, what about the area? The area formula from above is base times height. Okay, base times height. The height of a parallelogram always is perpendicular to the base. All right, let me say it again. The height and the base are always perpendicular to each other in a parallelogram. So my height in this parallelogram right here would be that number 24, 24, the 24 feet. Okay, there's my height, All right? Because it's, it's, it's the altitude, guys. Come a vertice perpendicular down to the bottom. Now the height is always drawn to the base, all right? So take a look. This height of 24 is drawn to the base of, don't think it's seven. Seven is not a part of the parallelogram. 24 is drawn to the base of 23. So I got 23 times 24. So hopefully you guys get where that's coming from. And then I multiply those two and it ends up being 552. Now this is why it's important for units. Now that we are dealing with area, the units, not the answer, 
the units are always square units. Okay, so make sure you distinguish that. Perimeter, it's just plain feet. And then area here would have been square feet. All right. All right, let's keep trucking. I got another new, we used Pythag there to find the missing side. Watch what happens now. All right, uh, let's talk perimeter here. Oh, we don't have, it just says find the area. Perfect. Love it. Okay, so now just find the area of each. So again, area is base times height. Height comes from a vertice perpendicular to the opposite side. So this right here is my height. And hey, hey, welcome back. Look what the height is a part of. The height is a part of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Back in the good old days when we were together in class, and we remember the rules, X, X, X radical, two. Okay. So let's go to that 45, 45, 90 triangle right now. What side do I know? I know the side of nine, which is across from a 45. And the height is also across from the other 45. And notice they're always the same. The sides across from the 45 is always the same. So that's going to be nine as well. So going back to the area, that's a height of nine. Now, what about the base? Well, take a look. The height was drawn to this base. How long is this base? Darn right, 17. Opposite sides are congruent. So the area here ends up being 153 square yards. Just gotta pause this one sec. Okay, sorry about that. Back to business. Had to take the old uh, brownies out of the oven. One job. All right, moving on. Part B, another parallelogram. So I still want to use BH. All right, now here's my height. And now take a look. Now that's a part of a 30, 60, 90. And these aren't going anywhere. You just think you're going to do them for day one? No, no. 30, 60, and 45, 45 are going to come up again. So let's remember our rules. X, X radical 3 across from the 60, and 2X across from the 90. All right, so what side am I given? What side is this 12? That 12 belongs to the side across from 30. And we're trying to find the side across from 60. So I take the 12 and multiply it by radical 3. There's your height, kids. There's your height. So the height's going to be 12 radical 3, and it's drawn to a base of 32. All right, so multiplying those out, we end up with, it says round your answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. And it is necessary here, 665.1 square meters. Okay, so be ready for your 30, 60, 90 or Pythag. All right, be ready for them all. All right, moving on. Let's roll with the triangle now. Find the perimeter and area of each of the shaded triangles. All right, each of the shaded triangles. I'm going to do part A with you. You guys are going to do part B on your own. All right, here we go. Part A. Uh, find the perimeter of the shaded triangle. All right, you got it, boss. Here we go. I already know one side is 19 of the shaded triangle. I already know another side is 41. Now I'm trying to find the missing third side here. And it looks like what I can do off to the side to find this missing third side right there is do a little Pythagorean theorem on the dotted triangle. All right, so off to the side, I could say 30 squared plus 27 squared equals C squared. All right. Uh, C squared here, guys, ends up being the square root of 1629. And if you check that, that's not a perfect square. Nope. So all I'm going to do is leave it like that. I'm going to keep it the square root of 1629 in my answer. All right, there are no rounding directions here. So what I always say is if there's no rounding directions, write out the full calculator display. You can't go wrong. Okay, so there's no rounding directions. I do 19 plus 41 plus the square root of 1629. 
and I end up with 100.3608721 inches. All right, so just write it all out. All right, here we go. How about the area? Now we do a different formula. Now it's one half base times height. Okay, remember base and height should be perpendicular to each other. So if I take a look here, it looks like they're telling me the height coming from a vertex down right here is 30. And it's being drawn to a base of not 27, not 27, it's being drawn to the base of 19 on the shaded triangle. And then I multiply that by one half. So hopefully you're seeing where I'm getting these values from. Always perpendicular to the base, base and height perpendicular to each other. And now multiplying those out, that ends up being 285 square inches. Okay. All right, guys, I think it's time for me to let you guys go on your own for one. So take a look at part B. All right, you're going to have to find the perimeter and the area of this. And just a little heads up, that's a right triangle. We're going to find the area of, remember, the base and the height of a right triangle are the two legs. All right, base height of a right triangle are the two legs. So make sure to write out your full calculator display because that's going to happen here and get after it. We'll get back to you in a second. Pause the video. Let's go. Get after it. Okay, let's see how we did here, guys. Uh, the only side I was given in this shaded triangle was 29. So the first thing I did up here in yellow was I did Pythagorean theorem to find the other leg. Okay, and I'm hoping you guys noticed that I did Pythagorean theorem on the unshaded triangle. So I was solving for B here. I wasn't solving for C. I already knew the hypotenuse was 13. So I did that, got the, got the square root of 133. I put that into my perimeter. Now I needed the hypotenuse of the, sh of the shaded triangle. And to do that, I needed to do Pythagorean theorem once again, but now with the square root of 133 and 29 as my legs. And I got the square root of 974, plugged it in, added those three sides up and got 71.7 and change. All right. And then to find the area, again, before we uh, paused the video and worked on it together, you needed to do one half base times height. If you're dealing with the right triangle, the base and the height are the two legs. So 29 was one leg and the square root of 133 was the other. Multiply those three and I get about 167 and change. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's finish this up. Little word problem with DeAndre. He's, he's a landscaper and he wants and needs enough mulch to cover his triangular garden. One bag of mulch covers 12 square feet. How many bags of mulch will he need? All right, so what are we talking about here? If one bag covers 12 square feet, hey, that's talking about area. All right, once I see that square feet, I know we're talking about area. All right, so we're gonna have to find the area of this triangle right now which isn't bad at all, one half base times height. All right, you guys take a look right now. What's the height? What's the perpendicular altitude right now? That's nine. And it's being drawn to what base? Seven. And I take one half of that. So the area of DeAndre's garden, 31 and a half square feet. All right, now here's where kids go nuts. And we got to settle down and focus here. So I have 31 and a half square feet. Every bag covers 12 square feet. How am I going to figure out how many bags I need? Do, and kids always go back and forth. Do I multiply by 12? Do I divide, multiply, divide? What's the deal? All right. If you don't know right now what to do with that 12, set up a proportion then. Here's how I always set it up. One bag covers 12 square feet. Well, guess what? How many square feet do I have? 31 and a half. So square feet goes right across from square feet. And you're figuring out how many bags that's going to be. All right. And you notice when you solve this, 12x equals 31.5. What did you end up doing with the 12? You didn't multiply, you divided by 12. All right. So number of bags. Now let's talk here. This is, oh, this drives me nuts. This is a little common sense. Funny story here. All right, so I'm doing 31 and a half divided by 12. Now let's take a look at that number, 2.625. 
I don't think I want to write that down. Do you think I'm going over to Lowe's later on today and asking whoever's working in the uh, floral department, uh, hey, uh, hook me up with uh, 2.625 bags of mulch. He's going to look at me cross-eyed like, what are you doing? All right. Are you even human? Are you breathing? How can you have 0.625 of a bag? All right. So we need to, we need to make sense out of this. Two bags won't do it. So what I'm going to have to say is, yeah, I'm going to need three whole bags. All right. Not 2.625. One job. Don't be, uh, don't be a embarrassment to your community. All right. Or the math community. So you got to round it up to three. All right. DeAndre still on a mission. In addition to the mulch, he wants enough paving stones to border his garden. One paving stone provides a four-inch border. How many stones does he need to buy? So what am I, if I'm bordering the garden, now I'm talking perimeter. All right, so let's find the perimeter of this bad boy. Nice, I would, oh, look at that, I'm giving all the sides. Seven plus 23 plus 15. So the perimeter ends up being 45 feet. Now here's where kids just take off and they're like, oh, 45, four inch border, perfect. I'm gonna divide both sides by four, I'm on my way. That's how many stones I'm gonna need. Baloney, baloney. You have 45 feet, read the darn question a little more carefully. What's one stone cover? Four inch border, but my garden's in feet right now. So what I need to do is take this perimeter and turn it into inches. All right, so my units stay the same. Watch out in this in this unit and next unit. Uh, everything changes, all right? Your final answer of units changes from time to time. So I'm gonna take that 15, multiply it by 12 so I can convert it into inches, and that's 540 inches. So now to find the number of stones, All right, I'm going to take my 540, divide by four. And again, if you don't, if you're still worried, do I divide or do I multiply? Again, ready? One stone for every four inches. Well, I have 540 inches. How many stones is that going to provide? Use a proportion. You can't go wrong. And you'll notice I'll need 135 stones. All righty. So there you guys go. Uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, make sure you show your work. Okay, show your work. I need to see what you are plugging in for to get full credit on an assignment. Okay, just showing me the final answer because you typed it in your calculator won't fly. All right, show me what you're plugging in. Good luck, everybody.